So good afternoon. Uh, this is our 15th session, and uh, yesterday we have started our discussion on the fluid kinematics. Okay. So specifically, uh, now our interest is to uh, define some of the kinematic parameters. For example, velocity, acceleration, and other related parameters which we will be discussing today. So yesterday we have discussed about the acceleration of a fluid particle. So in that uh, uh, derivation we have. Uh, uh, done one mistake, so that I will first try to correct over here. So, if you recall, uh, then the acceleration of particle final expression I have given you something like this. Okay, so this expression is actually wrong. Why it is wrong? That I will explain you. So, typically, because our velocity vector is nothing but function of x, y, z, and t, so all the spatial parameters as well as the time. Okay. So, because of that total derivative of velocity, I can write as del v vector by del x into dx plus del v vector by del y into dy plus del v vector by del z into dz plus this. Now, from when we moved from this step to next step, then we did mistake. Okay. So, yesterday when I was telling that uh, we have velocity vector which will be comprising of different components, u component in x direction v component in y direction and w component in w component in z direction. Okay. So, when we calculated this del v by del x, basically we replaced this with simply del u by del x. By saying that, yesterday I think some of you answered that in x direction only uh, we will be having dependence on u, but that is not true because our entire velocity field is actually dependent on all the spatial parameter. How? For example, if I have a few particle over here at some location x1, y1, z1 and time t1. Now, if after some time the same fluid particle is reaching to location x2, y2, z2 and t2, then I cannot say that when it has moved from this location to this location, then only x component of velocity has changed. Okay. So, upon changing the position, there can be variations in all the components. Is this point clear? Okay. So, even if you move, say the particle is over here and only it has displaced in x direction. Even if it is displacing in x direction, then also I cannot say that its v and w component are remaining constant. It may happen at new location, our V and W component are also changing even if only we are moving in that direction. Okay. So, as a whole complete velocity field or all its components are nothing but dependent on the all spatial locations. So, that is why whatever the uh, assumption we considered over here that del V by del X will be del U by del X that was actually wrong because all the individual components are dependent upon all the spatial parameters. Is this one clear? Is it clear now? So maybe last, yesterday I asked, I think someone said that and I have continued with that same notion and then. But ultimately all the individual components or as a whole the entire velocity vector is nothing but a function of individual spatial direction. It may change any component can change in either x direction, y direction or z direction. So, that is why whenever I will be moving to the next step, for example, for defining acceleration, if I do dv vector by dt, I cannot replace this del v vector by del x with del u, but I have to consider this a complete velocity vector. Is this point clear? Because this complete velocity vector is dependent upon x, y and z direction. Okay. So, now if you do this so, now we have actually specific role. So, dx is I am talking about the displacement in x direction and dt is time. So, change in displacement in x direction per unit time will be giving me nothing but the u value, x component of the velocity. Okay. Similarly, dy by dt will give me v component of velocity and dz by dt will give me w component of velocity. So, from this we will be getting this equation that acceleration of the particle is nothing but equal to 
u times del v vector by del x plus v times del v vector by del y plus w times del v vector by del z plus del v vector by del t which is the correct expression for x. Up to this point is it clear? So this is our correct derivation, uh, correct expression for the acceleration of a fluid particle. Then already I told you that the components which are dependent upon spatial parameters, these are nothing but the convective or advective acceleration and this time term is our local acceleration. Now, in uh, vector notation, I can write this as this convective part as nothing but V vector dot del operator times V vector. Okay. So, if it is V vector, then only my this complete acceleration equation will become a vector. Okay. Now, what I have done from this part, once again I have splitted this V vector into individual components. So, V vector will be having what components? U i cap plus V j cap plus W k cap. Okay. So, this splitting of uh, uh, velocity vector I have substituted in all the all the terms of the acceleration. Okay. So once I substituted these, then what I will be getting from here all the terms which are having i cap associated to that, that will be nothing but acceleration of the fluid particle in x direction. So all the terms from this detailed equation which were having which were having i as the unit vector, these I have gathered in a single term and that is nothing but my acceleration of the fluid particle in x direction. Okay. All the terms out of this equation which are having involvement of j component, these I have placed together and that is nothing but my acceleration of fluid particle in y direction. And similarly, if I consider the unit vector along z direction, then I will be getting acceleration of particle in z direction. Okay. And this way I can write that total acceleration vector is nothing but acceleration in x direction i cap plus acceleration in y direction times j cap plus acceleration in j direction times j cap. Okay. So please make this correction. Yesterday we have done small mistake while we are doing the acceleration of the particle. Yes, please. Del u by del y is not true. No, because the point is, I will give you one example. Say this is your u is velocity in x direction. Okay. If u is velocity in x direction, then at this solid wall, this is a solid wall. So at this solid wall, what is the value of velocity? At this solid wall, what will be value of velocity? Tangential velocity is 0 because of the no slip condition. And at certain distance away from wall, say this free stream velocity is over here u infinity. So value will be u infinity. And in between our velocity will be variable. So now you can see over here, u is nothing but velocity in which direction? x direction but it is varying with which distance? It is varying with distance y. So that is what I want to say. Whenever we are talking about the individual components of the velocity u, v, w, these are not only the function of x, y, z. These are in direction x, y, z, but these can vary upon change in any of the spatial characters. Is this one clear? So that was the mistake which we did yesterday. So maybe I asked some of you answered that okay only u will be function of x and others will be constant. So that's why that uh, error came into this. Is this point clear? So now we have corrected this. Okay. Then we discussed about the uh, some of the important uh, important uh, 
flow parameters which can help us in visual flow visualization okay so one thing we have discussed already streamlines so what was the function of streamline equation of streamline was dx by u dy by v and and one important point about the streamline was that that in case of steady flow situation streamline will always remain same okay it will not change with time but if flow is unsteady then streamline will change with both space as well the okay now another uh, important uh, uh, thing which we were talking about that was nothing but path lines okay so what do we mean by path lines i have told you yesterday that say this is my flow field in my flow field if i inject any fluid particle okay and if i try to trace the path of this fluid particle say at time t1 the fluid particle was over here at some other time t2 fluid particle has reached over here so similarly my at different different times t3 t4 t5 t6 fluid particle is actually moving in the flow field okay so if i just trace the path of this fluid particle and by tracing the path of this fluid particle if i draw a line that particular line is something which is called as path okay what is path line if you have injected some particle in the flow field and if you try to trace the path of that particle then whatever uh, path it will be following that we call as path line okay so can you tell me what will be the equation of path line say this is start point this is my t start whenever we have just injected the particle into the flow field and corresponding to that say x vector start is its starting position vector okay now if x is any arbitrary position of this particular particle at some time t and if v particle is the velocity of the particle then what i can say i can say that x will be nothing but equal to x start plus velocity of particle times integration from t start to t dt okay so that will be nothing but my new position of the particle fine by using this equation i can simply calculate the new position of the particle if we are injecting the particle at some start time corresponding to which our position vector is known okay so path lines are very very important why because path line can help us in determining the velocity flow field so in some of the advanced flow visualization techniques such as particle image velocimetry okay one of the advanced flow visualization technique is particle image velocimetry so what we do in particle image velocimetry if i have some flow field in this flow field we inject it with some seed particles so these are nothing but my seed particles in the flow field and then over some time frame we try to trace the path of this flow particle Okay, and if we say that these flow particles are of smaller size than neutrally buoyant, in that case, these particles will not show their individual hydrodynamics. Rather, they will immediately try to follow just the flow dynamics. Okay, so whatever uh, surrounding fluid is doing, they will try to follow its flow field. Okay, so because of that, this modern advanced technique is developed where we take the help of high speed. photography and we trace the individual particles and by applying this equation between the individual particles we try to determine their new position and based on that sorry our positions are known we substitute the final position in this equation and we try to estimate the velocity okay it will be dependent on time so that is the reason i must place it Okay is this point clear
for small time interval if you are decreasing time interval to very small then you can assume it as constant from the previous time step just now. okay is this point clear so this is something which is called as path then another situation and the importance of path line is it is used in modern day advanced optical diagnostic techniques for determining the velocity of a probe. Okay, so you can little bit search in more details about particle image velocity. Okay, so you will be finding the applications of path line. Okay, then we have another uh, flow visualization. thing which is called as streak line okay so can anyone tell me what do we mean by streak lines let us consider that this is my flow field and in this flow field I have some needle over here and through this needle say I am injecting air bubbles over here so air bubble or any other type of say if this is a liquid flow then I am injecting air bubbles over here. So say one bubble I have injected over here. Now what will be happening to this bubble? Once I injected depending upon the local velocity at this point this bubble will try to move. Okay. So similarly if after some interval I inject the another bubble at the same location then it will also move and then at some point of time it will uh, reach to some new location okay so this way if periodically i am injecting some tracer particles in the flow field at a fixed location okay and if after some time i just see the individual locations of these different tracer particles okay then can you tell me which tracer particle will be the farthest from this point which was injected first okay so i can say this is my tracer particle which was injected into the flow field at time t1 then this is the particle which was injected at time t2 some other particle which is injected at time t3 so what is this this is nothing but we are following path of different particles but all these three different uh, all the different particles nothing but are injected at the same point in the flow okay and if at any time instant at any time t if we see their time history okay what are their like individual locations at any point of time then if i join the line by following their path uh, by their locus then whatever the line which I will be getting that is something which is called as street line. Is this one clear? What do we mean by street line? Okay. Okay. So what I am saying is say this is my tracer particle number one which was injected at this point. Okay. And so along when we have injected so depending upon the local flow velocity it will be moving okay and after some time t say it has reached at this point so after some time t this particle one has reached at this location now the second particle which was injected this is this and after the same time t at which we are measuring the location of first particle at the same time i am measuring the location of the second particle that is this. Similarly, if I have over here injected n number of particles, okay. So, these n number of particles will be at different different locations at any common time t at which we are trying to trace their positions, fine. So, these are their individual locations. Now, if I join a line by following their individual locations by tracing the locus of their individual locations then at any time instant t then whatever the line i will be getting that is something which i from the path line okay 
So how it is different from the path line? Whenever I am talking about a path line, say particle is injected over here. Okay. Now depending upon the local velocity, uh, it is at this prime point. It is at this point. So now I am not talking about the path of this particle at any common time. What I am trying to say, I am following this particle at different different times t1, t2, t3, t4, t5 and then I am drawing this line. On the other hand, in this case what I have done? Yes. And the moment you will get more motion time. Times what is the Okay. So one is temporal evolution. In second case, we have a fixed time frame, but in that fixed time frame, if from the same location number of particles are coming, then what are the present location Okay. The trace of that is something which is called as streak line, and the trace of individual particles uh, motion is something which is called as path. Okay. So, path line, streak line and uh, uh, streamlines are very very important quantities which many times we use in the advanced flow diagnostics for determining different fluid behaviors okay. within the flow field. And typically one interesting point is that for a steady flow situation, for a steady flow situation all these three are nothing but same. All these traces coincide. Okay. So you will be finding for a steady flow situation, your path line, street line and streamline, these will just collapse to a single line. Okay. Is this point clear? Up to this point anyone is having any doubt? Now let's talk about the next interesting uh, thing. So we have, when we have a fluid particle, fluid particle can go to different types of motion. So simple thing I can say that say, this is my finite sized fluid particle. And inside this finite sized fluid particle, I have also considered a small, infinite, decimally small fluid particle of size dx, dy and dz. Now if this, so outside one is finite sized fluid element, okay. And inside one is infinite, decimally small. So now, say it is undergoing through some flow field. So if it is moving in a flow field at some other location, say this is the this is the identity of this finite sized field. Okay. When it has moved from this point to this point, so you can see clearly its size has increased. We are considering the same identity of the fluid element. So same identity of the fluid element has grown in its size. On contrary, this was the orientation of this uh, infinite decimally small element. So this infinite decimally small element say has now become oriented something like this and there is also some changes in its dimensions in individual directions. Say this is now dx, this is dy and this is Okay. So what is happening over here, when a fluid particle is moving from one point to another point, I can say that in this reason the pressure was more and in this reason the pressure is less because of that it the finite size control volume has actually extended. Fine. But if I consider an infinite decimally small control volume, of course this infinite decimally small control volume has also gone through some sort of deformations, okay, different deformations, but ultimately I can say that there is not much significant change in volume of this and volume of this. Okay. 
Of course, there will be change of volume, but change of volume will be small. But on the larger particle, it is visible actually as a significant. Is this is my clear. So now, if you see from this point to this point in the flow field, an identity of fluid element can change, can have its linear translation. So first point, what has happened from this point to this point, it has actually translated. So one is linear translation. So one type of fundamental motion I can specify is translation. Other is if you see here particle was oriented like this. Now the new orientation of particle is something random. So it means different faces of the particle has also gone through some sort of rigid body rotation. Okay. So second motion which can happen within a particle flow field that is nothing but the rotation of the okay third important thing if you see earlier this much was the extent of scale in x direction now in x direction it has actually grown okay so i can say it has gone through linear deformation what it has gone through it has gone through some sort of linear deformation fourth thing can be here all the angles were 90 degree all the faces were perpendicular to each other in the new location if you see this angle is not 90 now so it has gone to some sort of angular deformation okay is this point clear so translation rotation linear deformation and angular deformation are the four fundamental things which can happen to a fluid particle in a flow okay to understand this with more clarity we can take the help of a two dimensional system so i can consider a two dimensional fluid element of size delta x and delta y okay and now if i say that this was the location at time t now this fluid element is at this location which is at time t plus delta t but its sides have not changed their dimensions so these have remained the same so this is nothing but the case of a pure this is the case of a pure translation okay so it has translated from one location to another so if i mark any point p over here say this is the point p at the corner so if x1 y1 z1 and t1 was its indices so at this point i can say that now the point p dash will be having coordinates say x1 plus dx if it has translated dx amount in x direction or say delta x okay delta x i have taken for this size so let me use it dx1 okay and similarly in y direction also it has translated so in y direction i can say that y1 plus dy similarly i can determine its translation in z direction okay so this is nothing but the case of a pure translation then another situation i can have that i have a fluid particle something like this now this fluid particle has rotated something like this after time so this is at p plus delta okay so in this case what has happened if you see this is p q then p dash and q dash these are same in length p q is equal to p dash q dash as well as angle if earlier between the faces was perpendicular here also angle is perpendicular so there is no change in the angle between the faces as well as in the dimensions okay so if this is the situation then we will be calling this as the case of a pure 
rotation. So this is my pure rotation. Okay. Then third case, if my particle is initially like this, and at time t plus delta t particle has grown like this. So what is the case? All its faces, angle between the faces is not changing, but its linear dimension is changing. So it is the case of a linear deformation. Okay. Then next situation can be that this was the original particle and now this particle has actually become something like this. So what has happened now? The angles between the faces have changed. So this is the case of a angular deformation. Okay. So all these things are very easy if we look from the perspective of solid mechanics. Because in solid, there will be some finite amount of deformation and after that will stop or either fail. Okay, but in case of a fluid medium, what will be happening? There will be continuous deformation. So, if there will be continuous deformation, so all these quantities, nothing but we have to measure as function of time. So, we have to measure it in the rate form. So, whenever for a fluid element, I will be talking about the translation, I will be saying the rate of translation. I will be saying rate of rotation. Okay, rate of linear deformation rate of angular deformation. So we have to find all these parameters in nothing but the rate form. Because for the fluid medium, this will, this process is not continuous with time. It is not independent of the time. Is this one clear? So now, can you tell me how I can represent the rate of translation? It is very easy. We have already studied this. Sorry? linear transformation. What is the rate of linear transformation? You can just uh, uh, write all the dimensions of the fluid matrix and then whatever the fluid matrix that you make to the linear transformation. So linear transformation, rate of linear transformation means change in linear dimensions per unit time, which is nothing but a velocity vector. Is this one clear? Okay. How if I say that these two faces are parallel, if these have traveled dx amount of distance in time dt, sorry, I should not write this dx. Say these are the common faces. If I say that these have traveled how much distance? dx amount of distance in time dt. What will be dx by dt? u component of the velocity. If I say this phase has travelled dy amount of distance in time dt in y direction, then dy by dt will be my v component of velocity. Similarly, in z direction I can actually estimate the z component. So, when I am considering the pure translation of a fluid element, then nothing but the individual velocities of the fluid particle in x, y and z direction represents the rate of translation. So rate of translation I can simply represent with the help of velocity field of a fluid particle. Is this one clear? Okay. Then next comes now we have to quantify the rate of angular rotation. Okay. rate of angular rotation. So how to do that? For that we will take a generalized case which has gone through both deformation as well as the rotation. Okay. So let us consider that I have a fluid element and this fluid element is of size delta x and delta y. So delta x and delta y is the size of this fluid. Let us consider that 
this is the location of the fluid element at some time t after some time delta t t plus at some time t plus delta t the fluid particle is deformed something like this okay so this is the new distorted fluid fine let us consider that this particular phase is o a and this is o b so this o a phase has gone through angle delta alpha and with reference to vertical this angle has gone through delta beta so this delta alpha is in counter clockwise direction so i will be marking this as nothing but positive and this delta beta is in clockwise direction so i will be considering this as ne is this one clear so this is a generalized case where the fluid particle has gone through both rotation as well as the deformation okay because why it is not the case of a pure rotation because angles of the fluid phases between the fluid particles have changed so this is the generalized case of both rotation as well as the angular deformation okay however there is no translation because the start point of this is actually not changing its position okay so this is the case of a both angular deformation as well as the rotation okay now i have out of this fluid element i have to separate out what is the rotation component and what is the deformation so that i have to separate out so how i can separate out if i consider pure rotation then i can divide this into two parts first thing i can say that this was the original location and if i consider the pure rotation then this oa phase must move through angle delta alpha okay so if it is moving through angle delta alpha then for pure rotation these phases should be perpendicular so this other phase also should move through delta alpha so with reference to delta alpha rotation this is my pure rotation but this is for the case when i am having delta alpha. okay now corresponding to delta beta can what will be the pure rotation corresponding to delta beta pure rotation will be this will be pure rotation corresponding to delta beta okay these are the individual rotations for first one and individual rotation because of the delta beta. now can you tell me what will be the net outcome of this so when we define the rotation one is trying to move above one is trying to move below okay so whenever we will be defining the net rotation of this so for defining net rotation i will be taking average of both the quantities so i will be defining net rotation as nothing but half of delta alpha plus delta beta but as delta beta is in the opposite direction so i will be writing here minus delta okay so the meaning is the meaning is ultimately sum of these two quantities will give me will give me a final pure rotation of the element with some angle and that particular angle is nothing but half of delta alpha minus delta is this one clear why half because we want to consider the average effect of both the rotations so this is the net effect would be delta alpha minus delta beta sorry net effect would be significant delta alpha minus delta beta that is the angle of rotation okay but whenever we will be defining the rate of angular deformation then we have to consider the velocity of rotation 
so velocity of rotation from this side and velocity of rotation from this side so net rotation of velocity will be nothing but the average of them. is this point clear so what i am trying to say over here is that with reference to bottom it has traveled through angle delta alpha with reference to the other face it has traveled through angle delta beta so you can find that the overall net rotation which will be coming that will be just average of these two so average of that is half of delta alpha minus delta beta and from both sides you will be finding that angle is same okay now if i have to determine the if i have to determine the rate of rotation so this is net rotation what will be rate of rotation so all these rotation is nothing but taking place in how much time all these rota uh, rotation is taking place in delta t amount of time so net rotation will be sorry rate of rotation will be net rotation by delta t so it means half of delta alpha by delta t minus delta beta by is this point clear so this is my rate of rotation now i cannot measure delta alpha and delta beta for a fluid element because measuring delta alpha and delta beta in a complex flow field will be very very challenging so what we have to do we have to represent these delta alpha and delta beta in terms of the fundamental flow parameter such as velocity field and gradient of velocity field is this point clear so if i have to find angle delta alpha how i can find let me tell you so this was the original location of the fluid particle and once it has rotated through angle delta alpha then this is the new location so my this angle is delta alpha and this distance from here to here is delta x fine now can you tell me what will be the rise in this height if i say that this rise in height is delta eta so for a small fluid element i can say that delta alpha will be nothing but delta eta divided by delta x okay but i have to find out this delta eta so how to find out delta eta so you can say that this rotation of fluid element is because of the vertical component of the velocity okay so let me say that at this point my vertical component of the velocity is v what will be the vertical component of velocity at this point it will be v plus del v by del x into delta x if i just use the first term of the taylor series and remove all the higher order terms is this point clear so this will be my velocity at this point okay now how much is this distance if this is the velocity and delta t is the time involved for this rotation so this distance delta eta i can say as nothing but equal to how much will be delta eta relative to this point how much is the velocity del v by del x into delta x fine because rotation is happening relative to this point so whenever i am considering this linear translation also that also i will be considering with reference to this point so with reference to this point the velocity of this particle is nothing but del v by del x into delta x is this point clear so my delta eta will be nothing but del v by del x into delta x velocity times time into delta anyone is having any doubt up to this point v is velocity over here v plus del v by del x into dx is velocity over here so with reference to this point relative velocity because rotation is representing the relative motion so with reference to this point relative velocity is del v by del x into delta x so that is my delta eta so if this is my delta eta then i can say that delta alpha will become del v by 
del x times sorry delta alpha by i am calculating delta alpha by okay so what will be delta alpha now delta eta by delta x delta eta is del v by del x and this delta x delta x will cancel times delta this is my delta anyone is having any doubt in this what about delta beta can you tell me now delta beta so this is the original fluid element now this fluid element has traveled something like this rotated something like this through angle delta beta so if i consider that u was the velocity at this point what will be velocity at this point u plus del u by del y into delta y how much and if i say that this distance traveled is delta zeta so what will be delta zeta now relative velocity with reference to this is how much del u by del y times delta y and this has rotated in time delta t so into delta t. okay so from here i can find delta beta which is equal to delta zeta by what will be delta zeta by this distance was delta y so delta zeta by delta y is how much please tell me del u by del y into delta t so i have now got the values for delta alpha and delta beta so if i substitute these values of delta alpha and delta beta over here then my rate of rotation becomes rate of rotation becomes half of delta alpha by delta t so delta alpha is what this one delta t delta t will cancel out so we will be having del v by del x minus del u by del is this point clear is this point clear so now this fluid element is rotating in x y plane if it is rotating in x y plane then rate of rotation vector will be in which direction z direction rate of rotation vector will be z direction so from here i can say that this is nothing but the z component of the rate of rotation which is also called as angular velocity what is rate of rotation angle per unit time okay which is nothing but the angular velocity okay so angular velocity of the fluid element in z direction is nothing but half of del v by del x minus del u by del y we are del v by del x and del u by del y are nothing but the velocity is this point clear anyone is having any doubt up to this point so it means that for rotation of a fluid element in x y plane i have defined the component uh, component of the angular velocity z direction okay so similarly i will be having component of angular velocity in y direction also so what will be the component of angular velocity in y direction so for determining this what simply you can do you can write x y z in a circle and then just rotate in counter clockwise direction and then in counter clockwise direction when i am talking about y so my first coordinate coming is z so it means i have to consider del by del z over here and second coming is x so minus del by del x and i have taken then the cross derivatives of the velocity components so here i will be having u here i will be having that fine then when i will be talking about so if you consider now your fluid element in x z plane then you can calculate this by derivation also the way i have done over here for the x y okay but we need not to repeat the same process now we can just remember the values okay so for x now it will be 
half of del y del y minus del y del z and here it will be w here it will be so now we have determined the components of the angular velocity of the fluid element in individual directions so once we define their individual components then what will be the angular velocity vector angular velocity vector is nothing but omega x i cap plus omega y j cap plus omega z is this point clear this is my so till now we have quantified two motions one is translation for translation linear velocity is helping us in determining the translation of the fluid element and if we have to determine the pure rotation of the fluid element then angular velocity vector is helping us and ultimately it is becoming the function of the velocity gradients okay so if i know the velocity gradients in a flow field i can determine the value of angular rotation or i can see the angular velocity of that particular fluid okay now if you see from the vector algebra you will be finding that this omega vector is nothing but cross product of half of cross product of del or gradient operator into velocity okay you calculate the grade uh, this one uh, cross product of gradient operator into velocity vector you will be finding this comes out to this one it's half of this okay so i can say that that angular rotation vector is nothing but equal to half of curl of velocity vector. okay so if you Calculate this cross product, you will be finding half of curl of velocity vector is nothing but our angular velocity. Is this point clear? So now we will talk about uh, other two motions, fluid motions in the next class.